Smith, thank you for your uh, faithful labors in the text. Um, I think we're ready for membership. I shouldn't have much to say. <laughs> um, who wants to be a member? <laughs> we need each other. Um, let me just say a, a few words. If, if you, you know, we have this, this thing we call membership. And, you know, you might be thinking about other memberships you have to your uh, favorite online subscription or fries, grocery store or whatever. Um, what, what is membership? And, and you won't find that word in your Bible. So what, what actually are we doing? Uh, this is, is, is our way of just formalizing the commitment for the sake of clarity between uh, the people who are here regularly and by formalizing a commitment to say this church believes that the New Testament teaches what we claim it does, we want to be about that. We agree with that teaching and we want to live with the other members of this church on those terms. Uh, you heard even from Kyle this morning uh, this description in Ephesians about what God is doing with his body, uh, with Christ's body, this household of God. It's a family, right? And you come and we sit here with a few hundred people every week, um, and yet it may not feel exactly like your living room, like you're sitting around the dinner table. Besides what it feels like, this is what God says it is. It is a family. And so like a family, we commit to each other. And God, who is a good father, like good fathers who are managing their homes, has a household code. And so in membership, that's the things that you're committing to. Let me just point your attention just briefly to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians is a helpful book on ecclesiology, on what the church must be and do. Because Paul, all throughout this book, is seeking to fortify or establish the unity of this church. They are splintered. There are factions. They are divided over matters of which the gospel would not divide them. And so here in 1 Corinthians 12, still dealing with this issue of unity, particularly when it comes to spiritual gifts, he says this in verse 12. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So there's your member word. And what Paul has in view, just like a body, your finger is not your body. Your eyebrow is not your body. Your foot is not your body. Those are members of your body. Together, they form a single unified whole, a body. And that's the comparison that Paul draws on to help remind the Corinthians of how silly it is, how foolish it is to be divided in the ways that they are. Many members, but one body. This is just like Christ. Many members made up Christ's body. The, the human Christ. And likewise, the church is the same. Many members, but one unified body. And just notice in verse 13, the spirit really was the, the means. This is, it was by him, with him, in him, if you will, that you were immersed into something. One body. The New Testament does not have a category for a Christian who does not function as a member of the body. Where is that? It doesn't exist. The natural impulse for everyone who has been 
adopted by God in salvation, powerfully converted by faith in the gospel. They trust Christ. The natural inclination of that individual, because of what the Spirit is doing in their lives, is to attach themselves to Christ's body. Just like Christ isn't separate from his own body, Christians don't desire to be separate from his body, the church. And so this is the natural impulse. And here in membership, this is what we're doing. We are just formalizing. We are recognizing those individuals who have that confession, who are holding to that confession, and in a tangible public way are saying, because I have done that, I want to attach myself to this church, to this group of, of members. I'm going to add to their number and take all that the Spirit's doing in my life and bring it here. Utilize spiritual gifts, resources, time, relational, capital, and I'm going to prioritize this group of people. So that's good for us, not only for new members coming in, but those who are already members to remember, oh yeah, that's, that is what we're doing. And so in a second, I'm going to have uh, several people come here. You'll, you'll just line up here, awkwardly face the rest of us. <laughs> and we're going to read together the membership covenant and just remind ourselves, old and new members, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And again, with this many people, it's hard to remember we're actually family. Everybody won't have the closeness of relationships, but with these new members, old members, remember, this is your obligation. They're committing to you to be a spiritual benefit, and you're committing to them to be a spiritual benefit. And so as you're able, I mean, the, the grill out is a great opportunity Introduce yourself to new members that you may not know. Seek to, to meet them, hear their testimony, what God's doing in their lives. And we are going to do what Kyle read this morning, all grow up into this building that God is, is building. So I'm going to uh, read these names. You'll just come up um, and, and just line up here. Uh, first, Hannah DeShields. James Hardina, I think he's not with us this morning, wasn't able to make it, isn't feeling well. Doug Heffel, Mike and Olivia Lee, Carol Liu, Todd and Heather Owens, Mark and Rachel Palace, Diana Perez, Eldon Smith, and Nadine Smith, Caitlin Strikesma. Kenya Turner and DJ Woodard. And I'm reading those slowly on purpose so you can recognize the names with the people walking up. So these are our new members. These are the people that are committing to obey what the New Testament has called them to with this group of believers at Grace Bible Church and vice versa. Okay, so if we could get the, the membership covenant up, what this is, is a, an articulation, a specific articulation of what the New Testament calls us to in Scripture. And I'm going to have everyone who's already been through this process, all the members, just stand. And this is a couple times a year we get to do this. This is a good moment to just pause and look around for a second to just recognize who your, your other family members are, who else has committed to these things. 
And some of those still seated um, are still in process, uh, eager to do this same thing. Maybe uh, they need to be baptized. Hopefully you'll see some people being baptized doing this next time. But these are the, the, this is the household of God here at Grace Bible Church. So we're going to read these things together um, and just remind ourselves of what exactly we're committing to. Here we go. Humbly trusting that God has graciously brought us to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and having been baptized upon our profession of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, in dependence upon God's gracious help, solemnly enter into covenant with one another. We will pray for and be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the church, being a peacemaker with all in the church. We will walk together in brotherly love, exercising an affectionate care and watchfulness over each other, faithfully encouraging and admonishing and entreating one another as occasion may require seeking with tenderness and sympathy to bear each other's burdens and sorrows, being slow to take offense and quick to forgive and reconcile with one another. We will strive for the advancement of this church for Christ's sake by not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, by remaining faithful to God's word concerning our biblical doctrines, church discipline, the Lord's table, and believer's baptism, by exercising the spiritual gifts given to us as members of the body of Christ, by giving cheerfully and sacrificially to support the gospel ministry of the church as it extends both into this community and the nations, we will seek to live boldly as witnesses for Jesus Christ where God has placed us, living a transformed life and proclaiming the gospel that the mission of Jesus Christ might advance in this world. We will persevere in raising our children under God's watchful care that they might by his grace repent and believe in the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ, that they, oh, I'm sorry, I'm rereading. We may, we will, if we move from this church as soon as possible, unite with another local church where we can obediently live under God's word in fellowship and where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant in the body of Christ. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for uh, these truths that you would even allow us to be members of Christ's body. What a, an uh, inestimable treasure, uh, a reason to be thankful to you, uh, that you would adopt us into your family and build us up all together. We praise you for such grace, the only gracious God who would do such things, love us in this way, and we pray for the strength of this church, that you would use these new members to strengthen the body and use the current members as well to strengthen these new members. And we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to just have the elders come up. You can shake hands. The, the band's up here getting ready. Uh, go ahead and be seated. And as the elders come up and just greet the new members, uh, the band will get ready and lead us in a couple more songs.